This Avalanche Safety Report is brought to you by Mountain TV. Learn more at mtn-tv.com. Welcome to the weekly Avalanche Safety Report. I am here with Brian Lazar from the CAIC. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing well. Thanks, John. How about you? I'm excellent. Thank you so much. What a whopper last week on Thanksgiving, huh? Yeah, what a difference a week makes. Uh, oh. We'll just take a look at what that storm did for our statewide snowpack. So here's a graph of kind of snow water equivalent uh, average statewide across the state. The top lines are maximum, the red lines are minimum, and that green line is our long-term median. So you can see this steep uptick in that black line, which is this season. And that is all of our Thanksgiving storm snow, which pushed our state uh, well above long-term median. So we're sitting at over 120% of long-term medium. And what that did for us in terms of uh, snow water equivalent on the ground by river basin is you can see that large swaths of the state were doing quite well. And even in the far northern portions of Colorado, where we've seen less snow, we're uh, you know, at least at 90% of long-term median. So right now, we're doing pretty good in terms of snowfall. That's outstanding. What does that mean for avalanche safety going forward from here? Yeah, so that was quite a wallop to a fairly thin snowpack. And as we expected, you know, we saw tons of avalanche activity as the snowpack first took the brunt of those storms. So you can see here on the Y axis is the number of avalanches and you can see right on uh, the, you know, the backside of that Thanksgiving storm, we were dealing with dozens of avalanches uh, per day. But since then it's been quite dry and this has led to a precipitous decline in avalanche activity as we've moved through this work week and towards the weekend. Um, you can see avalanches were fairly widespread across the compass, both in terms of uh, aspect and elevation, but those southerly facing slopes remain our areas for safest travel because they didn't have all of the weak snow that was existing on the ground prior to the Thanksgiving storm. Um, notably, this has led to a you know, decrease in avalanche danger across the state. So most of the state of Colorado, we're looking at moderate avalanche conditions, some areas of low danger, meaning generally safe avalanche conditions. But it's important to note that moderate danger does not mean um, safe everywhere. Uh, we still have slopes where we're worried about avalanche activity. Things are not as hair trigger and we don't expect natural avalanches. But if you do trigger an avalanche from the wrong spot, they're gonna be quite big now with all that recent new snow connecting across the terrain. So here's just an example of some of the more recent avalanches which took place in the aftermath and since that storm, and they are decreasing in frequency, so lower likelihood, but higher consequences. And so you can see these avalanches are now breaking across wider swaths of the terrain, and you can imagine getting caught up in one of these would be really bad news. So they're getting big enough that they're going to be hard to kind of survive, essentially. And the reason that is is because this is the snowpack structure in a lot of parts of the state. You can see the top half of this snowpack is the Thanksgiving storm snow. That's what's creating the slab. And underneath it is this visibly weaker snow. And whenever you stack strong snow on top of weak snow, you got conditions for being able to trigger an avalanche from the wrong spot. And uh, one of our forecasters is out in the field in the Southern Sawatch range out near kind of Taylor Park. And this video kind of captures the concerns of the conditions across the state. So I just wanted to play you this short video. Hey, this is Ben with the CAIC here in Taylor Park in the Southern Sawatch Range. Uh, I'm at about 11,000 feet. I was just walking up this hill, triggered a collapse. You can see the crack right there. And it occurred just as I got on top of these shallowly buried rocks. The slab thins right on top of these rocks. Perfect trigger point to trigger a large avalanche. Here in the Southern Sawatch area, you can still trigger large avalanches on many slopes, especially above about 11,000 feet, where the slabs get a little bit thicker, stronger, and can break much wider. And so I think, you know, that video that Ben just captured for one portion of the state really does illustrate conditions across most of Colorado. So we don't want people to look at the map, see moderate danger, and think that everything's, you know, safe to travel on. So just be aware that, you know, we still have the, the potential for triggering avalanches on a bunch of slopes, particularly above 11,000 feet on northerly and easterly facing terrain. Uh, so it's important to get your local avalanche forecast. Outstanding. You can always stay up to date with the latest forecast at colorado.gov slash avalanche. Enjoy the backcountry and be sure to stay safe and stay alert. Thanks so much, Brian. Appreciate it as always. Thank you. See you next week.